Okay, here's a look at my collection of Autobot Prowl through the years. This is not a comprehensive collection of all the Prowls, but these are what I still have left after giving some of them away. So what I want to do is just take a look at my collection. Starting off first with the uh, original Generation 1 Prowl. So here's the original toy. This, you can see, it has all the stickers. So this looks really nice. And I want to just share, you know, this was one of my favorite G1 toys, but I was never able to get it. Um, my first figure was Sideswipe, but this is really a nice figure. So let's just uh, compare this with the animation model. And you can see where they based the character design off of. They kept some things same, such as the little line detail on the thigh. They took off that police sign. They painted the light blue windows. So I think they did a, a nice job on the character design. And this one, unlike most of them, he has a face, not a mask, where they gave him a face. So that's, I think, what makes this look really cool. So after G1, there was the chug line, which stands for Classics, Henke, Universe, and Generations. And this right here is the Takata Henke version, which is actually better than the US version. You know, you get those uh, chrome metallic paint, like on the guns, even the spoiler down here. Really nice. I did have to custom paint this the windows were actually not blue, so I took a little blue silver sharpie behind it, and I think that makes it look really nice. But uh, this is the uh, remake of the original character, not meant to look like the cartoon, but to resemble it. And so with that understanding, See, you can appreciate all the nicely sculpted detail on this figure. That's what makes the chug line uh, still very uh, attractive, in my opinion. All the nicely sculpted detail. So that's a chug. And then, I think after that, they actually did uh, make uh, Legends. So this was their Legends. I think this was the Reveal the Shield. <laughs> when these came out, these were actually really cool because the concept of having a small figure that transformed was really cool. It's just too bad they never made all the figures. And this actually looks good because it has those uh, Repro label stickers on it. This one's kind of swiveling off, so it makes it look a lot better um, but now they have the new legends so let's compare it with uh, the new age and magic square and you can see how this evolved this cool concept of legends figures and you can see that looks nice and new age I want to point out some things they um you know the the quality of the plastic they use is so much better and the paint finish so it does look nice however things here like the ball joints there are certain areas where the design suffers because i think they went too ambitious trying to make this uh really small but that's where magic square you can see theirs looks a little bit more cartoon accurate. People complain about the uh, gummy plastic and the opaque color finish, but it still looks really nice. 
And one more interesting thing, New Age usually goes for more of the toy, toy aesthetic and Magic Square goes more cartoon aesthetic. But this is where it's a little different. Like the door, for example. That's more cartoon accurate and that's more toy accurate. So a little backwards with this uh, figure. But that's a quick look at the legends. And then there's the retail version. So this is the War for Cybertron. Uh, I think it came with uh, Ironhide. So this is actually a really nice figure. But I had to custom paint this, the legs, the silver, the details on the hips because Hasbro, one of their trend is uh, they purposely do little things to not make it accurate. Um, so if this was back in the old Chug days where Takata was making their version, you know Takata would have painted this cartoon accurate. But this is uh, the retail version and it's still really nice nonetheless. Except some people complain about that and I agree that doesn't look uh, too good. But that's the retail. And another comparison, let's see if I can kind of go up here, is the alternator. So here is the alternator prowl. And this, this toy line, in my opinion, was really awesome. Still one of my favorites because um, the engineering design, what other toys other than Alternity gives you all this detail. This is like one of those die-cast cars. I mean, it's really nice. Plus this actually transforms, so really nice. And I did mistransform this so that the back of the car windows is the front of his lower legs. And I just want to point out, I think they should have used the Subaru design because just imagine if this was painted like prowl colors, this would look really, really nice. Um, but they didn't, so uh, this is the Blue Streak with the Repro Label stickers. Looks really nice. And I want to point out another thing. This is, Hasbro is actually better than the Takata Binotech because this is all plastic. Because the die cast and the uh, Binotech has problems with uh, weight distribution. So that's uh, uh, one of a rare thing with Hasbro being better than Takata. So that's that. And the last one is the Masterpiece. This is the plus version. I actually had the uh, original, but I gave that away to my friend and he gave it to his kids. So hopefully they're enjoying that because it's a really nice figure. But this is the plus version and this is the older masterpiece design. So it still has some extra detail on here that makes it uh, look nice, but uh, it's not uh, the new aesthetic where it's cartoon accurate. But this is uh, a great figure nonetheless. So this is my collection of Prowl through the years. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy to have these. So the retail, the uh, chug line, the original G1, the Magic Square, which is a mini masterpiece. These are really awesome. Uh, the New Age and the Legends, the old Hasbro Legends. So that's a, a look at my collection of all the Prowls that I have in my collection through the years. Okay, let's straighten out this mess.